imagine that you are in the city of Medina and Our Lady Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam has just passed away. Now Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, she was only a little girl when her mother was martyred. And I want you to imagine that you are in the house of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Sayyidah Zainab is asleep in her bed while outside Imam Ali alayhi salam is burying his beloved wife alayhi salam. I want you to imagine that Sayyidah Zainab has woken up from a dream and she is crying and she is distressed. And she says, where is my mother? Where is my father? What would you do to comfort her if you were the only one there with her in that moment? What would I do to comfort her? Well, when anybody loses their mother, it's not going to be an easy thing. We lose a close family member and we feel like we're broken into little pieces and the world is falling apart. But then when you think that it's Fatima al Zahra who passed away, you're thinking, how is that young girl going to cope? As holy, as modest as her mum was, how is she going to cope without her being by her side? How is she going to cope without her growing, like being by her side as she grows up? And I think, what, what would I do? What could I do to comfort her? Anyone would be like, I would be there to wipe her tears. I would be there to, to tell her that I'm here for you. I'd be there to be supportive, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm not her mother. And that's at that time, that's what she would have wanted. But from what I could do, as I said, I'd try, try my best to just comfort her, try my best to just listen to her, you know, wipe her tears. Um, as much as I would love to some sort of get her out of like the thoughts of her mother not being there, Having those little last memories of her mother is what's going to build her as a woman as she grows up. She wouldn't want to forget her mother because that's her role model. So I wouldn't do anything that would make her think like away from her mother. I would want her to, to remember her as well as comfort her. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would try to do. That's my best. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's so true. In the process of grief, it's not forgetting that individual because we never want to, but it's just coming to terms with their loss and keeping their memory alive within our hearts. I now want you to picture that you are in Kufa, and it is the night of the 21st of Ramadan and our master, Amir al-Muhmineen, alayhi salam, he has become martyred by the strike of Ibn Muljam. Now Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam is an orphan. She has no mother. She has no father. She's alone. What would you say to her in that moment? She's an orphan, no mother, no father. She has to, her siblings, she's by herself. I can't imagine what she was going through. You know, how I think of it is like this present day, there's a lot of people around the world who are orphans now and my heart breaks for them and I can't do anything about it. But uh, when it comes to say the Zainab, and it's like, she lost her mom and her dad and she's by herself. She's going to need someone to stand by her, to, to tell her that everything's going to be okay. I would try my best to... I would try my best to just be there. I don't know what else to, to say, honestly, because you're put in a situation 
where it's not pretty for anyone. So imagine that young girl, imagine her, imagine how she felt. And it's, it, it's playing with my mind because I wouldn't know what to do. In that moment, I would be speechless. I would just look at her. I would hug her, I would kiss her. I would show her as much as love as I could give her. I would give her as much love as I could knowing that she's, her mum and dad aren't there to give her that anymore. And she would need as much as she can to go through everything. As difficult as this is, sister, I now want you to imagine that you are on the plains of Karbala. And it is the 10th day of Muharram in the year 61 after Hijra. Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, she has lost her brother Al Hassan alayhi salam years earlier due to poisoning. She has just lost Abu al Fadl al Abbas, her shield, her protector. His body is lying by the Farat with no hands. She has seen her nephews, her sons, and her friends killed. And now, Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, the last thing she has in this world, he asks her to bring him his horse so he may ride out to the battlefield for the final time. I want you to imagine that it is you who is holding the horse of Imam al Hussein. You have the reins of the horse in your hand. And Sayyidah Zainab, she comes up to you and she asks you to give the reins to her so she may give that horse to Abba Abdullah. How would you feel if she said that to you? Um. She's obviously seen a lot of people that she cares about who have passed and as I said before, it's not easy. It's not easy at all and for it all to happen so quick, it's like, how, how do you want her to cope that easily? It, she can't even get over one person, yet alone the second. And these people are so close to her. Imagine seeing Father Labas without hands and it's like, what do, you, what do you want her to do? What do, you, what do you want her to do? How is she feeling? And now sending off, sending off Imam Hussein. Like, what, what, what is she going to do? What, what am I going to do? What can I say? How am I going to react? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what I'm going to do because just imagining this, just imagining this, being put in this kind of situation hurts me. It's burning me and it's like I'm trying to I'm trying to say something but I can't because I'm traumatized. I feel uncomfortable. I I I hate the idea that she had to see all of this. I hate the idea that she was put in this kind of situation. Because it's not fair. It is I genuinely don't know what I would do. injustice of what happened to Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, this bright, beautiful moon from Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. The injustice done against her is one of the most heart-wrenching things that you will ever come across in your life. I want you now to picture that you are on the streets of Sham. And it is a day of joy. The people are treating it like a day of Eid. And yet you can see that caravan of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, in chains. And they're being taken to the court of Yazid. You see 
the face of Sayyidah Zainab salam, with no veil to protect her, with everyone staring at her, those blessed <sighs> cheeks hit by the hands of men, the whips of shimmer on the, her back, on the back of the daughters of Hussein. People mocking them, jeering at them. They're poking swords and spears into the waists of these ladies. They're not used to men looking at them. If you were standing in that crowd, what would you do? If I was standing at that crowd, I'd give a speech, maybe I would scream, maybe I would shout. I don't know what I would do. Because I would want to speak loud, I would want to embarrass them for making them uncomfortable, for making say the Zainab uncomfortable. I, because if I spoke, maybe maybe there would be a difference. Maybe they'd feel a bit of comfort. Maybe if I said something, that percentage of people who might have not stared, that percentage of people who might have not mocked, is a difference, would make a difference. And I'd do anything just, just, just to make her a little bit comfortable because of the situation that she's already in. It's, it's not nice. It, her situation is already disgustingly tragic. It's heartbreaking. And so the least we could do is try at least make her feel a little bit comfortable. Keep her modesty. She... They were bullying and that makes someone feel so small. And for her, such a powerful person to feel this little because of inhumane people disgusts me. So being put in that situation, I would be more disgusted than what I am today. And thinking about her, her, what she's been through, thinking about how she went through all of this, thinking about the lady that she became because of all of this. I, I have this feeling inside me that has, I, I can't even explain it. I'm, I'm torn, I'm truly torn. Your words really struck me, sister. The fact that you were so passionate to speak out, to humiliate the oppressors of this caravan. And that is exactly what Sayyidah Zainab salam teaches us. That it doesn't matter what is done to us, we must always speak out against oppression. And it was through her fiery words in her sermon that she was able to bring Yazid to his knees. Even though it is important to never forget what happened to our lady, we must feel a sense of hope that one day the crimes done against our lady will be avenged by our master, Baqiyatullah, Sahib al-Saman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance on the earth and make it easy for him. We all want to be servants of Imam Mehdi. We all want to be his close companions, to look at that praiseworthy face and bring joy to his heart. I'd like to know what qualities from Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam would you hope to show 
the Imam of our time. The lady that she is, she has many qualities, lists that goes on and on. But one quality that stands out the most for me would be bravery. This woman went through everything, stood there for her family, watched her family die one by one, and she was brave, she was strong. These qualities is something that I would dream of. To her, like I could tell, I could tell everybody that I'm brave, and it might be going on a roller coaster or something. But she was beyond brave. She exceeded the brave that I have. She was something that I would call impossible, because for someone to go through that much, for someone to go through that much, and still be able to walk, that's beyond amazing. And that's a quality that I would need. Her strength, her bravery, her love. It's all beautiful characteristics that she held together. It's what made her the lady. As you said, she's, she's beyond beautiful. She's beyond powerful. She's beyond inspirational. She's a role model. She's someone that I would look up to that I do look up to. In fact, I die to be like her. Mm -hmm. Just a percentage. Mm -hmm. we, who, what we are today, who we are today, we're looking at those kinds of characteristics. And for me to have that, that'd be. It would be the most beautiful thing. Basically. And those words of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, they live on until today. When Ibn Ziyad mocked her and said, what do you think of what Allah has done to your family? And she turned round and defiantly said, I saw nothing but the beauty of God. I thank you so much, sister, for appearing on Imagine with me today. And I thank you so much for your passionate and engaging thoughts and discussion. And I pray that Our Lady Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam is pleased with your efforts. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us firm and steadfast on this path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and to make it easy for us and that he may hasten the reappearance of our master Sahib al-Zaman and end this sorrow of occultation that is in our hearts and to bring justice to this corrupt world once more. Oh